Hello everybody, I am your host to Elusive and welcome back to another episode of Azure Striker Gun Vault. This time around we're going to be taking on Sinner's Row and the adept we're going to be facing this time goes by the name of Zonda. Now, Zonda is an interesting adept. Unlike the previous ones that we've faced so far, Zonda is also another one that has a split persona, much like our snake lady friend over here that we fought earlier. The only difference with this persona, uh, aside from the persona that we've dealt with with the snake lady who just split it into two people, this one's able to switch their gender on the fly. Like, I don't know if you noticed this, but I haven't really called Zonda a he or a she, and that's because Zonda is the definition of gender fluid. So, because of this, I really can't say what, Zon what gender Zonda really is. I just have to call it an it from here on out. And you won't really get to see it's, I would say, the female version of Zonda in this version of the game anyway. You will see both versions in the second gun vault when Zonda returns. In fact, we even find out who Zonda really is, but I'm not going to dive too deep into that. I'm jumping way ahead of myself and talking about gun vault too. But yeah, just know that Zonda is definitely gender fluid. Anyway, let me take a moment to talk about Saints... No, Saints... Oh my goodness, I love to call it Saints Row. Uh, Sinner's Row. Let me take a, take a moment to talk about Sinner's Row here. Sinner's Row is pretty much the only stage, I believe, that has pitfalls where you can die if you fall on them. So I would definitely be careful here, but it's not all that bad compared to like other pitfall-ish games. Uh, I shouldn't say games, but stages, I should say. And I don't know if you've noticed it, but I'm also playing on the not casual mode of the Kudo system here. And I try to get a double and I mess that up. But anyway, I'm, tr I'm playing on the non-Kudos version of this, and that's only because... Unlike the previous levels we've been through so far, this is the only one that doesn't have its own exclusive anime song. So it would be, it would kind of be pointless to even like try to do that on this level. So if the anime song comes on, great. That just means I was able to obtain it. But if not, eh, it's no skin off my bones. Oh crap! Well, I guess I'm not getting it because I got hit there. That's just unfortunate. But anyway. Another thing that I, I, you know, I might as well cash in what I have now and get the checkpoint. Anyway, another thing that you also need to know about this stage is later on it does have a bit of a mirror gimmick. And you will see that gimmick when I get to that point in the level. Wow, I'm just getting hit. That's what I get for not paying attention. Aside from that, until I get there, there really isn't much else to really say about this stage, other than the fact that it looks nice, and I also really love the theme that plays in this level. Like, out of all the default themes you hear in the game that isn't the anime stuff, this one isn't really so bad. I really like this theme. It's probably my favorite one out of all of them. But, which leads me to say that when it comes to Gunvolt's default music, it's... It's alright. I mean... It's not bad, it does fit the levels that we're playing on, that's for sure, but it's nothing too memorable when you compare it to, I would say, themes that you would hear in Mega Man Zero. I bring up Mega Man Zero seeing as how this is the game, this game was made by the same people who gave us Mega Man Zero, so that's why I made the comparison there. But I always felt that Gun Vault's OST was on the level of okay. Not bad, but not to a point where I will find myself playing through the playing through the soundtrack like that anyway. But anyway, this here is Zonda, and like I said, right now we're looking at the male version. And all I can say is that his design is rather interesting. Anyway, you don't really... How should I put this? I don't really want to spoil what happens when we get to the end of the level, but let's just say that the fight here, when we get to it, is very, very interesting. And not for the reasons that you think. Again, I'm jumping a little too ahead of, ahead of myself. Dang, if I knew that that bomber was going to come in, I would have tagged him. Oh, well, I'm just going to leave him be. 
Anyway, whenever you step into any of these mirrors, you pretty much enter a warp zone, if you will. And these warp zones can change at the drop of a dime the moment you enter these mirrors. They can basically revert. Now, thankfully, these warp zones do not do anything dickish, like reversing your controls. God, I hate that so much. Uh, but yeah, they don't do any of that. Rather, it just flips the stage upside down, reverses the direction in which you have to head over, and so on and so on. But it's really nothing out of the ordinary. Now, there is a trap room somewhere around here that you do have to be wary of, and I just want to point that out. But I don't think we're going to run into it if I'm careful. Anyway, we're just going to go ahead and end this siege mode right now by using your sphere move. And that'll get rid of the, the alarm that was sitting at the top there. Like I said, if you ever want to clear these moves really quickly, just use your specials and get rid of the alarm trigger. And that'll clear it up real quick, just to keep things moving along. Anyway, I gotta remember that I don't have a reason to save my kudos this time, so... I don't mind running through the checkpoints. Oh, hold on. I just want to get rid of that. And I'm just gonna glide across. I thought there was gonna be a large gap that I had to come across there, so that's fine. Now, this is the wrong way that I'm about to head into right now. Like, I know off the top of my head that this is not a door you want to enter. So, we're gonna go ahead and enter it anyway just to show it off. Oh yeah, that's right. I also have air dashing. Which is very helpful to have, but keep in mind when you do air dash, it does consume your EP. So keep that in mind. Now, I could cheese this room and do the alarm shortcut, but there's two problems with it. Number one, it's way up there, and number two, like I said, activating supers in the first gun vault for the Switch is kind of awkward. When you're playing on the original 3DS of this game, you operated your you operated you activated your skills. Oh, that's too many crap. That's too many tags. So I'm not gonna get the double there. Oh well. Anyway, that's too many um, not too many tags. What was I about to say? I lost my train of thought here. Oh yes, yes, yes. When you are playing this on the 3DS. You activate your skills through the touch screen. Here, you, as I said in a previous episode, you activate them through angling your right analog stick, as you can see at the top right there, and then you have to press it in. The thing is, when you do that, you have the chance of angling the stick and then pressing it in at the same time, which I have done before, and it sucks when it happens. Also, right now, this is what I was referring to when I say that the stage flips upside down. And I don't know if you catch that earlier, but I've also received a gemstone for our troubles as well. So, that's one more gemstone that we can scratch off the list. Why am I collecting these gemstones? Well, long story short, you basically need them to get the full ending of the game. And if you don't have all of them, well, you're, you'll be able to fight what is called the fake endgame boss and I'll elaborate more on that when I get there but just know that if you want to get the full ending of the game you need to get these gems anyway we're pretty much reaching the end the end of the uh, stage here and we're about to go ahead and square off against Zonda to see what he's really I mean it's like to see what it's really like now while the illusions are gone they're oh hold up Oh, that doesn't sound good. At least for him. Oh. So it looks like we're not going to be fighting Zonda at all. That's right. Instead of fighting Zonda, we're going to be fighting against the White Mega Man here. Now, what's special about him, as I said earlier, is that he takes the powers and abilities from other adepts that you have defeated, actually, and he uses them against you. So, the way this fight goes down, his arsenal is going to be very dependent on which adept that you've defeated prior to this battle. Since we've defeated the Medusa Lady and also the Laser Guy, he's going to have those two abilities during this fight. But that's not all he's going to rely on. He also He's also going to rely on his default gun, which can block your tag, your tag needles. 
and he also has another gun which neutralizes your electricity entirely whatever you do don't get hit by that gun and you'll know when you see it it's very obvious to tell which one is a neutralizer and which one is his regular pistol if there's anything else that i need to say about this fight as well oh yes if you jump near him he's going to counterattack with a shield rush and when he shield rushes or when he backflips your tags are removed instantly. Now, why am I explaining all of this instead of fighting him and explaining this at the same time? This fight requires a lot of concentration. So, I'm probably going to go silent when I'm fighting this guy. I just want to point that out there. Because this fight is, I would say, the first time where the boss fights are relatively challenging. Like, you see how he just like took it off right there? And that's also the Snatcher that I was talking about earlier. Also, it's very crucial that you know exactly when to use your lightning powers. In fact, the best time to really shock him, in my honest opinion, is when he's using the Mega Man powers against you. Because he's, pre he's pretty much vulnerable at this point, and as long as you're dodging the abilities, you can get a lot of damage on him. Just a little more. Oh, never mind. Alright, there we go. So let's see what he does now. Oh, see, I messed up from dodging that. I actually was trying to avoid it. And I didn't get any bullets on him, so now I can't do anything. Because if you were to shoot him now, his bow is going to uh, gonna block off your needles, so there's no point. I messed up again. Alright, now I can shoot him. I can shoot him. I can shoot him. Alright, I'm just going to avoid his stuff. Recharge, get some more damage in. It does help to have the ability to air dodge as well. To avoid that move. Oh no, oh no, that's not good. And because I don't have any EP, I'm gonna take every. I'm gonna literally take every bit of damage that he throws. Like, once you get hit by this thing, you're literally a sitting duck for a while, and it sucks. Like, don't get hit by that move ever. Alright, I only got one tag? Ugh, that's actually pretty nasty. Alright, move out of the way. I'm getting, like, abysmal damage on him. Oh, nope, he shook it off. Rat! Ah, uh, I ran into it. Oh, lordy. I right, hold up. Thankfully, even with your... Oh, that could have been bad. Even when you have no electricity right now, oh wow, I actually avoided all of them that time. You can still use your skills, so keep that in mind as well. Alright, here we go. Honestly, though, out of all his moves, that's the one you want to avoid the most. Simply because of the fact that it makes you vulnerable. Alright, he's about to die. Oh, snap, I didn't realize he was like shooting at me like that. So, all in all, he is definitely one of the harder villains that you will face in this game. And with practice, dodging his stuff is relatively easy to do. The only reason why I was getting hit as often as I was is because I'm sort of out of practice. But if you know how to you know maneuver around his shots relatively well, his attacks are very easy to avoid overall. Oh, I shouldn't say very easy, but it's relatively easy. But anyway, his name is, I believe it's pronounced Copin or Coppin. Pretty sure it's Copin, because Coppin just sounds a little... Actually, no, Coppin doesn't sound silly either. Um, I'm not sure what the pron the actual pronunciation of his name is, but I usually call him Copin or Cop. Actually, Coppin rolls off the tongue a lot easier. I'm going to call him Coppin from now on. Or just Cop for short. He sort of is a police at this point, when you really think about it. He's one angry cop, though, that's for sure. Because I don't know if I've explained this in a previous episode, but his main backstory is that his parents was killed by adepts, and he wants revenge on all of them. Including yourself. And that's simply because you're an adept. Doesn't matter if you're a good guy or a bad guy, because you're an adept, he has a vendetta against you. And that's basically how he functions. 
And in this cutscene here, we get a look at the villain that's running the entire Samuragi 7. Now, I don't know if you've noticed this as well, but the entire Samuragi is made up of the de the seven deadly sins. Well, they're named after the seven deadly sins. But basically, we get a little bit into this villain here, and we learn about what he's trying to do. And long story short with him, he's after the moose. Because remember what I said earlier, Gunvolt's original mission in this game was to kill the moose, which is Jewel, the girl that's staying with him now. But the reason why he didn't do that is because he basically saw a little bit of himself there, where he was in the exact same position, and his mentor, Osmov, had brought him on board, and had him work under him instead of outright killing him. So because he felt that same connection with Jewel, he said, alright, you know what, instead of killing you, I'm gonna save you instead. Although, sadly, because he went against orders, Osmov cut him from the team, because of, you know, protocol, quota, everything else in between. But they still keep in touch despite all that, because at the end of the day, Osmov is kind of like family to Gunvolt. And if you can't remember who Osmov is, he's the guy with blue hair from the very beginning. Long blue hair, pretty much Randy and the organization for Quill. But yeah, the main reason why he's after the Moose is because the Moose has the ability to boost an Adept's abilities. So basically, any if you're an Adept and you have the Moose with you, her song magic will make you a heck of a lot stronger. You know, now that I think about it, that's like the same concept that was used in R. Tenelico, which is basically an RPG that was on the PS2. I think there was at least... I think there was at least two games on the PS2 and a third one on the PS3. But anyway, that pretty much ties it up for this episode. Next time we get back in, we're going to go ahead and take on the Media Tower, followed by the Biochem Plant, and then lastly, the Pharma Lab. So, once again, I am Too Elusive, and as always, play until your thumbs fall off. I'll see you guys in the next episode, and peace out, everybody.